Hello guys, today we're going to look into a simplified way of fetching data like Pro and Angular. Uh, I've done a previous video similar to this and today we're going to redo it with some constructive feedback that we had from before and we're also going to redo it with Angular signals. This is definitely something you're, you're going to want to see if you're working with Angular, so let's get started. So jumping straight into it. So for instance, in many use cases where I read it code or where I've been working, this is a common case where you essentially fetch data from the backend and while doing so, maybe you want to handle loading states, maybe you want to handle error states uh, and so on. So in order for this to work without actually using Redux or something similar, you would actually have to manually set it in this way. So when you start fetching data, for instance, here, uh, this dot is loading, you should set this to true. And then once the subscription, whether it has gone bad or right, you would probably want to set is loading to false. All right, so this is a common case and you would subscribe to fetch data. Probably here you would also want to have maybe take one or uns uns unsubscribe and so on to ensure that it actually completes once it has been retrieved once. So in order for us to actually create a better way a more reusable way of actually having to do this for every single API call that we have. There's one video, as I mentioned, I've done before called the perform clause. We'd create a clause, for instance, and this clause would probably do much of this logic for us. All right. So let's jump into it and let's actually start refactoring this code into something more reusable and something easier to actually get grasp of. So the first thing I would do is I would now let's create a clause. Let's call it perform clause TS without TypeScript. Put them side by side in this way to make it easier for us to actually preview. Uh, would export a clause called perform. We want to have a generic type T. We can call it T data in this case. Uh, we're going to have a couple of variables. So we can look what do we have to the left and what do we have to the right. And as you can see here, we have Google Copilot doing this job for us. <laughs> So let's do it manually. We have is loading and has error. There's a couple of states we want to have. Keep in mind, we want, we want these ones to be private. And the reason to why we want to make them private is because we want to block the accessibility from changing them from outside of the class. All right. So this means we need to have getters. So is loading it would this one would just return. Same thing for has error. And, and here is the most interesting part, right? So we, we want to have a constructor with, which essentially would take, so it would, in this case, it would just take in an action, so an observable. And this is going to be of the type T data because we want to be able to actually have strong typing from outside of this comp component. So this is called generic typing in TypeScript. It's commonly used in other languages such as C Sharp, uh, Java, and so on. So continuing, we are going to do a couple of things. So first and foremost, we need to actually add a new variable. So for instance, fetching the data, maybe you want to have the data in the TS file. All right. So what we want to do is we want to have yet again, a private object, which in this case we would call and set the value to T data or undefined. So initially it's going to be undefined. We haven't done anything really. And we're going to just return it in this way so that we have only one place where it can be changed from. It can only be changed from within the perform class, but you would be able to access the data is loading as your states from within, from outside. So for instance, this component here. So what we want to do is we want to pass in an observable and we want to keep this logic that we have here. And we want to be able to actually reuse the logic that we have here for multiple purposes and multiple logic. So in this case, we're only fetching from one API, but it, I think it's quite commonly used that you fetch from multiple APIs. So this would mean you would have plenty of logic where you need to handle different states and so on. And now people would say, yeah, you need to have state management. And the truth is you do not need to have state management for this. I think many people uh, really doesn't have the deeper understanding of how to actually work with with angular and thus if they have a react background they would fall back automatically to using redux or ngrx or state management i think that in 98 percent of the cases that's just a random number uh, i think 
state management would be quite redundant for what you're actually implementing. Thus, it has its good benefits in different cases where you want to have mutation of data in multiple places. I think that's not something you would have as a default in your application. So it would be in, in some scenarios, I would say. All right, so now we have the data, we have the is loading, we have the has error. Now we want to do the most interesting part and we want to create a, an action. So we're going to say here, for instance, we're going to create um, this one. Let's make it, uh, let's say it's going to be an action. And then we're going to return the getter as we did before. Uh, let's see here. And it's going to be an observable of this type thing. All right, so it's just going to attach all of these things that we have here, and it's going to return the observable back to the place where we have it. It's not going to return anything really. You will be able to access it through this variable here. All right, so now that we have it here, first thing we want to do is we want to set the value, and now we can pretty much copy whatever we have here, to be honest. And here you can determine whether you want to have it as, um, let's see here, pipe, and then, we can import all of the missing function and has error here. In this case, it needs to be underscore has error. Same thing goes for loading states and so on. So this is loading equals to true. Finalize and so on. So let's continue with what we have here. So it's going to assign this variable here. It has some, let's see here. This is just a typing that it complains about. Uh, let's see here, return a callback. All right, so it would just take a callback and then it would do nothing. It's a, it's a void message. All right, so let's continue. We'll look into that shortly. So we'd remove the take one as well from here. And here we could maybe change it. We can have error management. It all depends on really how we want to handle it. So what we would do now is we need to turn this one into a throw error, so an RxJS, an observable, and then this one would throw the error. So here you could have, for instance, you'd have uh, the error message here. You don't know what the response really would be, but what you could do is you could say error.message and it would automatically just forward the error message. And then you can utilize the logic in this way with type security and so on. All right, so the most important thing is now that we have the observable. We're going to utilize the async pipe. This is a feedback that I received in my previous video. I'm thankful for you guys engaging, giving feedback, asking questions. So really good job for that and thank you. Um, all right, so now that we have this logic, we could pretty much start refactoring the code that we have here. Also, before doing so, I want to give you just one thing to look into. And this is something I would say is the most ugliest thing you can see in code. I think this is horrible when you give TypeScript or essentially you have no assertion here. Um, this is giving us a false security of that data will always be assigned or defined, which is not the case. The real typing here should actually, in fact, if you don't give it a default value, it should be data array or undefined. So this would be the correct typing of the data object here. So please do not use the exclamation mark here. It ruins everything, it type security and so on. Understand that you guys, maybe there's some issues with testing and you would have to have the question mark syntax and so on. But trust me guys, try to get rid of it. There has been so many side effects where we worked with code and we've seen that this is the, the, the reason to why we have it. All right, so refactoring, to be honest, we don't need anything of this. We don't need the title. We do not need any of this as well. And another thing I would recommend, guys, uh, stop using the constructor. I think we could use the, the inject instead. So we would go with private read only data service, and then we would inject it in this way. So there's a couple of benefits of this. I would say it's a lot of cleaner syntax. Uh, there's a one-liner here. It's easier to stop mock when you're doing testing. There's a lot of benefits related. So I would recommend this clean pattern. It's also sim simplified when it comes to actually, for instance, if you have one component that you want to extend from another component, if you have this logic and you extend from this component, you wouldn't have to call the super on the constructor and you wouldn't really have to 
essentially make sure that you're importing the, the same things in the constructor and the other components. So this would be much simplified in those cases where you want to extend a component that actually has, or it could be services as well. So this is something you can use all over the, the Angular application. All right, so this is the first thing I would do. The second thing I want to do, you can, you could remove implements and join in it. So let's go ahead and do that. People are now going to, to, to call me out for doing it because I know a lot of people really like to have the pattern where they call the data before after the ng on in it. So let's let's not do that. Let's make people a bit more angry. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make it simpler, simpler for us. We are in fact going to create an instance of this perform clause that we call it. And we are going to say, um, let's see here, we have, let's call it perform. And then we're going to create a new instance of the, this perform clause. So just object oriented programming, you're going to give it the type. So the, the type in this case would essentially come in here. It would place the type as T data. And here it would be confusing. We cannot have the T data array here or here because that would be a matrix. So it's good that we saw it. But the, the, the benefit of this is that it would actually replace the T data everywhere in here with the type that we pass in, all right? So I think also now it would understand the typing because I'm passing the type in, but I think the compiler would be as smart as, as understanding that this is an observable of the type data. Maybe it would understand it, the type here as well. So as you can see here, uh, it has the perform data here. It seems like it, it understands the type just by passing in the input here. So whatever we're passing here, it would understand the T data is this value. So it's, it's quite nice. So now we have the perform clause. The question is what do we still need to have from the other logic? And the answer is nothing. So this means we changed all of those code into two lines of code here, but keep in mind, we have a lot of code in our clause. But remember this clause can be reused for multiple API calls within the same component. Meaning if I wanted to, for instance, call something else, I could call perform two and I could now call hypothetically another uh, service function to retrieve more data. So this means we have removed a lot of redundant code. So let's test this out guys, just going to place the Chrome next to this so that we can play around with it. Just to give you a heads up, uh, the data service is just mocked observable. So we have passed in uh, two person, John and Jane. So we're going to try this out. All right, so, all right guys. Let's get started. I'm going to shortly have the Chrome next to this so that we can watch it. So now that we have the code side by side, there's a couple of things we can do. Now we have the perform here, just of a good or bad habit, I don't know. I'm going to clean this up a bit. And as you can see, we're down to 13 rows of code. So now we need to test this out. Does this really work? Is it as good as we, we spoke? Or how would we use it in, in, a, in a real scenario? Remember it's an array. so. How would we use this? Um, so for instance, we're using the, the async pipe, right? So we're going to do, uh, we name it perform and the action is, is essentially what we're returning. And now we are just distracting this observable as async. This would mean we don't need to clean up the observable. Angular would handle this for us within the async pipe, which is good. And then we're piping that with JSON so that we get a JSON result. And as you can see here, this, is in fact giving us the data, right? So the, the, I would say the good benefit of actually having this call clause is that we can access, so if I would do perform, let's see, perform, perform, and now you would just do this. We should have full IntelliSense on, for instance, has error. We should have full IntelliSense of its loading. So we should be able to actually utilize them, for instance, to make calls that would, maybe you would have skeleton loaders or something like a preloader indicating that data would be fetched now. I'm mocking the data so it's, yeah, you have it instantly. So if we would just add in delay to actually what's being set, I think this would, let's see here, would have delay, let's just give it a delay of two seconds. You would see it, it's loading one, two, and it appears. 
So if you come back to the here, we could, for instance, have now, I'm not using Angular 17, sorry for that. We're still on Angular 16, as it's still the LTS of Angular. But what, what we could do is now we could say, uh, div uh, ng if has an error, we could print the error if we would want it to store it, but we're not really storing it. We actually want to have this loading state. And here we could say, hey, we are loading, loading data. So it would give us the loading data here and which, yeah. And as you can see, once it has loaded, it jumps back and removes the error. And in this way, you can actually generalize how you handle data that comes from a backend. So in other words, you wouldn't really need to have, uh, you wouldn't really need to have anything similar to, for instance, NGRX to, to, to do this. And as I mentioned before, we're going to look into signals. I can see her, I messed up, we didn't have a signal, so we're going to add a signal here. So in order for us to actually set the signal, there's a couple of things we wanna keep in mind. Um, we could actually give it a default value here. So we could say signal, then we can also give it a type here, and we can say, we're going to have as, as regular as before we had um, T data or undefined default value would be undefined. So in this case here, we would have the same logic where we would have the typing here. So I think it would be a settable signal where we can, oops, let's go ahead and do this. And you might think, why do I need the data when we already have subscribed to it and we have the result already in the HTML? But thing is, you might wanna be able to actually utilize the, the values of the data that we have received within the app component TS file, and then we would have to store it somewhere in order for us to actually be able to access it. So why not using signals when we are at Angular 16 in fact? So in this way, let's see here, we need to change the way we set it. So we didn't set it before, that was a mistake. So here we'd have the data and this should be a T data. Now we should be able to not call next, but we should call be able to call set. Sorry, set. So now we should be able to actually, we should be able to, to listen to that changes and, and do changes based on that. So if we now should go to that component here, for instance, we could create a new signal utilizing the computed. So let's say the age, ages summed up, it would be, let's say we do the computed. So this would be, we would listen to this when the data has been changed. So when we receive the perform clause, the signal will be changed. And now this one is going to be evaluated if we utilize that signal from within. So we we'll do this dot perform dot action, uh, sorry, not action, but rather data in this case. And with signals, you need to have the parenthesis in this way. So now here we'd have the data. So we do the data. And then we could just, for instance, we could return something here. It actually wants us to return something. And now we have the reducer already returned for us. So the good copilot does the work for us. So if the data set, we want to be able to calculate or sum up the ages. So um, the first statement would be the previous value. Second one would be the current value. The current value is of type data, which is age and name, as you can see here. So we'd go previous value plus current age and we would start with zero. If that's not defined, we would have just zero. So this means we should be able to actually utilize this from, from here. So if we would go to the app component HTML file, we should in fact be able to, to do this. If everything goes smooth, it start with zero, and then once it's changed, it could be calculated. So this means we could set up listeners for the signals from within the component. So when something is being fetched from, from backend, we're distracting it, we're storing it within a signal. Now we can listen to it, we can do changes, we can do really whatever we want to do. So this is a really good benefit with using signals. I would also say that signals in Angular is something that's going to be groundbreaking. I know a lot of people haven't started using them yet. I would recommend you guys starting to use them, try them out to see how they would work. Um, there's a lot of benefits. I have another video outlining that. So if you would be interested, please watch that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Please leave some comment feedback. Make sure you subscribe, of course. And if you have any suggestions on things you want me to look into, please just drop a comment and I will make a video about that. Thank you. All the best. Bye.